Hello friends, welcome to RC Verma's Pharmacology channel. In this channel, I will keep on discussing about certain topics and lectures which are quite confusing for MBBS students. But if you keep on listening to these topics and these discussions, then certainly all your doubts and confusions will be solved. So today we will discuss about the rationale of the use of the beta blockers in case of prophylaxis of the migraine and also we will discuss about the possible mechanism of the beta blockers in case of hypertension. So friends, first of all, let us discuss about migraine. Migraine is a mysterious disorder characterized by pulsating headache usually restricted to one side which comes in attacks lasting 4 to 48 hours and is often associated with nausea, vomiting, sensitivity to light and sound, flashes of light, vertigo, loose motions and other symptoms. Pathogenesis of this disorder is not well understood. Triggering factors may be related to foods, for example, aged cheeses, salty and processed foods, alcohol, certain food additives like sweeteners and preservatives, and no doubt, skipping the meals or fasting can also trigger the attacks. Moreover, stress, disturbed sleep-wake cycle, intense physical exertion, including sexual activity, may also provoke migraines. Certain medications like oral contraceptives and vasodilators, for example, nitroglycerin, can aggravate migraines. Family history of migraine is also an important risk factor. So, how does it all start? Due to triggering factors, there is depolarization in the cerebral cortex. This causes vasoconstriction of the blood vessels of the brain. Because of this vasoconstriction, ischemia takes place. And we all know that ischemia itself is a potent vasodilator. So, finally, there takes place vasodilation of blood vessels of the brain which causes pain of the migraine. If we are talking about prevention or prophylaxis, then we need a vasodilator. Why? Because we need to stop the first step that is vasoconstriction. Because vasoconstriction causes ischemia, ischemia causes vasodilation and vasodilation ultimately causes pain. So, if we are talking about the prevention and prophylaxis, we need to stop the first step that is vasoconstriction. Hence, propranolol, a beta blocker which acts as a vasodilator is useful in prophylaxis. But during an acute attack, patient comes to you with dilated vessels because during the acute attacks of the migraine, the blood vessels of the brain are severely dilated. So, that time you need a potent vasoconstrictor to oppose this vasodilation which is causing pain and acute attack. So, here ergotamine and dihydroergotamine which are partial agonists of 5-HT1B and 1-D receptors and also triptans that is sumatriptan Frovatriptan and Rizatriptan, which are full agonists of 5-ST1B and 1-D receptors are the most important drugs because these drugs cause instant vasoconstriction by acting on 5-ST1B and 1-D receptors. You should also know that Sumatriptan is the drug of choice for acute attack of migraine and also know 5-HT1D receptors cause constriction of cranial blood vessels in humans. This type of receptor is also found in rats, but its structure is slightly different 
from that in humans so this receptor has been designated as 5st1d in humans and 5st1b in rats now coming to the next confusion that is role of beta blockers in hypertension we know that beta 2 receptors on blood vessels cause vasodilation and beta blockers block these receptors then how come it can be possible that beta blockers themselves are vasodilators because of which they are used in hypertension why so basically exact reason is not clear but i am going to tell you the most possible mechanism involved in it yeah it is true that in the beginning when beta blocker therapy is started there is slight vasoconstriction total peripheral resistance increases initially due to blockage of beta 2 mediated vasodilation and cardiac output is reduced due to blockage of beta 1 receptors in the heart so there is little change in the blood pressure with continued treatment resistance vessels gradually adapt to chronically reduced cardiac output thus total peripheral resistance decreases due to vasodilation as a result of adaptation by these blood vessels and both systolic and diastolic blood pressures fall blood pressure gradually falls in hypertensive subjects but not in normotensive subjects why this gradual adaptation take place only in the hypertensive and not in normotensive people is not clear till date to the medical science this is considered to be the most likely explanation of the anti hypertensive action other mechanisms that may contribute are number 1 reduced norepinephrine release from the central and peripheral sympathetic outflows due to blockage of presynaptic beta 1 receptor mediated facilitation of the release process actually beta 1 receptors are also present on the central and peripheral adrenergic presynaptic endings here these receptors are for positive feedback that is these facilitate the release of norepinephrine from the presynaptic ending here these beta 1 receptors are also known as auto receptors because an adrenergic receptor that is this beta 1 receptor is present on the adrenergic nerve fiber terminal that is receptor and nerve fiber both are of same class same class means adrenergic class that's why here we are calling this beta 1 receptor auto receptor okay then what is hetero receptor let us understand it with an example suppose that had this beta 1 receptor been situated at the presynaptic serotonergic ending this would be called as hetero receptor because beta receptor belongs to adrenergic classification while the nerve fiber on which this receptor is now located is serotonergic if this presynaptic receptor facilitates the release of the transmitter from the presynaptic ending it is known as receptor with positive feedback and if it inhibits this release it is known as receptor with negative feedback here beta receptors for positive feedback are blocked by beta blockers thus beta blockers inhibit the release of norepinephrine from presynaptic ending that is anti hypertensive action by beta blockers number 2 renin release from juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney 
is mediated by beta 1 receptors on juxtaglomerular cells. These receptors are also blocked by beta blockers and thus there is inhibition of renin release. However, pindolol does not decrease plasma renin activity but is an effective antihypertensive. That's why I am saying that antihypertensive action of the beta blockers is not fully understood. Point number three, beta blockers increase the synthesis of prostacycline which is a vasodilator. And also know, as I have told you before a while, that beta blockers inhibit the sympathetic outflow from CNS and PNS, but the beta blockers which cannot penetrate the blood brain barrier are also equally good antihypertensives. That's why I am repeating this statement over and over that the exact mechanisms which are responsible for antihypertensive action of the beta blockers are not fully understood. So if you find this lecture helpful, like this video and subscribe to this channel and share this channel with your family and friends, comment your views and finally thank you and all the best.